well do you take constructive criticism? Do you recognize your own faults or do you tend to see those faults in others? Just how self-aware are you? The biggest lies are the ones we tell ourselves. Whether it is to justify our actions, to boost our ego, or to get one up on someone else. Being truly, brutally honest with yourself enables the most profound changes to occur in all aspects of your life. Whether it is relationships, friendships, a job, or your own actions, they can all have a positive effect on your life. However, we need to learn to recognize when the effect of these relationships and actions are positive and when they can lead to potential damage. A common thought process that many may have experienced in their life may be, these people are my friends, these people like me. Good friends have a positive influence on your life. However, toxic relationships would chew away everything from you, leaving you feel like it is normal to feel so drained after being with your so-called friends. Being able to recognize these kinds of situations for what they are can guide you to make better and healthier decisions. And that is why we need to get down to the nitty gritty, break apart preconceived ideas, generalizations, and get to the core of what is going on in your life. In doing this, you can identify what behaviors may have led to certain outcomes. And once you have identified that, every aspect of your life can change. Being self-aware can be one of the hardest acts to follow, but when you are consistently self-aware, it will become second nature. It can prevent cognitive distortions like overgeneralizing, overthinking, all or nothing thinking, and personalization and blame. Being self-aware is not just about blaming yourself, it is about being aware of the entire situation from all sides. The behavior may seem innocuous at the time. However, when you honestly analyze what happened at the time and what it led to, you begin to form a pretty brutal pattern that tumbles into every aspect of your life. Sometimes it is as simple as staying in a situation that led to a bad outcome like participating in gossip, then finding out those same people gossiped about you. Sound familiar? Let's take a look at a real life scenario for some people, which can cause them to feel stuck in a situation they are too afraid to leave. A person that experiences domestic abuse. A victim of domestic abuse is not at fault when their partner hits them no matter how much the abuser claims it was their fault. In this instance, the hard act is to acknowledge you cannot fix this person. Staying is not helping you or them. In this case, being self-aware of your contribution to the situation is that crucial part. You are still staying. This might sound harsh and it is very difficult in many cases to leave. However, Stopping and admitting that staying is not going to improve anything is that first crucial step. From there, steps can be taken to regain self-confidence and self-esteem, an aspect probably lost due to the abuse that has taken place. Then from there, in-depth planning, a strong support network and even police involvement can begin. It all starts with that first step of being self-aware of what you may need to do. On the other side of the coin, an abuser may blame their victim or their past for why they are violent. Making excuses for that behavior guarantees change will never occur. Being self-aware in this situation means acknowledging the behavior, what has contributed to it, what triggers it off, and avoid using the past as an excuse to continue acting a certain way. Each side of this story had a part to play, and only by being self-aware of that part enables constructive change to take place. Let's take a look at some different thought processes that can be altered once you're self-aware of where that thought process can lead. You installed a dishwasher, and the customer has called to say it is no longer working. 
there are several initial thoughts that can occur. The customer must be mistaken. I know the dishwasher is fine. Or, I installed that dishwasher. The customer must be accusing me of not installing it properly and blaming me. Or, hmm, I'll check it out. Perhaps there is something else going on I haven't thought about. Each thought would probably lead to a different emotion and outcome. Being self-aware might mean you initially have one of the first two thoughts. But then you stop and analyse that the customer is not necessarily blaming you, they just want it fixed. Ending up with the last thought means a productive outcome is basically assured and more likely to receive repeat business. However, if you stick with one of the first two thoughts and approach the customer with a defensive attitude, well, you might not only lose that customer, but any others they could have referred on to you. How about, hmm, if your partner says to you, I really wish you would listen to me more. Several thought processes can come from this. <sighs> I get blamed for everything. Well, my partner doesn't listen to me enough either. Why should I? Or, is there something I can do to at least improve the situation? Like asking my partner what makes them think I don't listen to them enough. Or is there some truth in what was said? Think about it for a moment. Which thought process would lead to a productive conversation and which one or ones may produce a more negative outcome? You are at a social event and a person standing close to you doesn't speak to you. You may think, that person is so rude, what a snob. Or, is there something wrong with me? Am I not interesting enough? Or, I haven't said hi either. That person may be shy. Perhaps I could say hi first. What statement shows self-awareness in this situation? Hmm, your children are running around, making a bit of a mess. You may first think, no one helps me. However, being self-aware may then cause you to think, well, perhaps I may, may need to let people know when I need help and accept their help more often. One situation can present with many different thoughts and possibilities. It is up to you which one you go with. Keeping in mind thoughts are not facts. So having a thought process that is self-aware and flexible enables you to be open-minded to a range of possibilities without being caught up in cognitive distortions and getting stuck with just one possibility. As it says in the Bible, before removing the speck out of your brother's eye, Remove the plank out of yours. This saying or moral is rather apt. Both sides have specks or planks. However, focusing on removing your plank first can help to improve your eyesight or, in this case, see things more clearly. Note the saying, before trying to remove... That is, being self-aware focuses on your behaviour first, then analysing others' behaviour and contribution, and see how you can respond to both.